Hey, what's up? This is Brody. Uh, this is uh, that little tutorial that I promised you from the webinar. And uh, this is going to be completely unedited. And so if I make a mistake or whatever, say something stupid, it's because I'm not going to edit it. Uh, all right. And so anyways, uh, from what I understand, or remember, I think you were asking about how to properly expose. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said, I asked if it should be like shadows first or midtone second or whatever. And uh, to be perfectly honest, there's not really that huge of a difference, uh, whichever one you choose to, to, to do first. Uh, I personally like starting with like the shadows or the highlights. Uh, if you notice, this is what I'm looking at right now. So this is a completely untouched, unedited uh, version of what you sent me. Um, so you don't have to have these lines here. These are just what I personally like. They're broadcast safe standards and everything. And I just find that the image looks better that way. Uh, there's a few ways. Of, there. So if you want to copy exactly what I have. So like this is the low. That's that one right here. This one, 940 is that. Uh, it's roughly broadcast. I don't even know. 100% uh, if it's actually literally the exact numbers for broadcast, but I get good results with this. So that's what I use. All right. And uh, whenever you're doing so, okay. Uh, I think you said this was from the GH4, which I also own. Uh, so I'm assuming it's a uh, Cinelec D. Uh, what you notice is it's not a true log image, which is totally fine. But what, what I noticed with a uh, um, Cinelec D is uh, it's not super compressed. If you notice, like it's uh, it's down almost to 128 and almost at 896, which is cool. You know, it's not a bad thing, but most log images, they're crunched even more, but it doesn't really make a difference at all because all you're doing is adding saturation and uh, uh, pulling the shadows down and bringing the highlights up. It doesn't really matter. This, this entire log craze, uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm not falling for the fad. There's there's good re, uh, uses for it, like really good uses for it in post with color and everything, but it's really not that big of a cool trend. Not at all. All right, cool. Anyways, so the first thing that you always want to do, kind of like what we covered in the webinar, is, uh, let's see, to, to address your question. So this is what I'm going to do. Since you want to do a white balance and you want to do a an exposure, what I like to do, I like to do my white balance first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Parade. And Denver kind of uh, touched on this topic a little bit. Um, here, let's see. Where are you at? Uh, let's see. The white balance is good enough to me. Uh, I was checking on a few other things. Yeah, white balance looks good to me. All right, so you did a good job. And uh, la, la, la. So now it's time for exposure. So let's pretend that we'll, we did... Uh, white balance if just in case if it ever needed it or whatever that particular this particular clip doesn't it's, it looks good so all i'm doing is taking the highs you could have started with the lows too it doesn't really make a difference so this is all you do with log L literally all you do take the highs to the highs take the lows to the lows i'm not even looking at the image right now all i'm looking at is taking my uh this part the lowest part down to the line. That's literally, I didn't, I'm literally not even looking at the images I'm talking or while I was uh, uh, moving the, the highlights and shadows. That's the part where I consider it a uh, more uh, mathematical, uh, a, a, a mathematical approach versus uh, creativity. Uh, so exposure, always just keep it in the ranges that you personally like. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say keep it around here the highlights these are the highlights uh, these guys right here that's the highlight the hottest highlights so I think that's plenty right there it's not a full-blown white light so I, I'll keep it there and shadow I don't like to go all the way down so there's uh, I don't like to be too crunchy especially since it's a uh, h264 uh, let's see so the shadows uh, I'm assuming right here this these are the lowest shadows something like this maybe right here those look good enough to me and so the next thing that I want to do is uh, focus on the midtones, and I haven't added any uh, saturation yet, so I'm kind of looking over here towards her skin, and I want to make sure just that that her part of the, this part of this her skin that it doesn't get too either too dark or too bright. So uh, what I did is I re right clicked to get off of that, just in case you don't know that shortcut. Uh, okay, so I got my lows and my highs. Now I'm just going to kind of like toy around and just get something decent. Make sure this is on. And looks good to me. I'm going to bring these down again. 
I don't have to, but I kind of want to. All right, so that's that's all right. I'm gonna leave them out up like that. I don't really care. Uh, looks fine enough, good enough. All right, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to do your uh, your vector scope, which is gonna be your saturation levels. And so, if you don't know how to read your vectors, you take uh, from point to point. You do not go beyond that because otherwise it's just too saturated, and that's uh, technically illegal for broadcast standards. And it just doesn't look good. It looks stupid. <laughs> Oh, see? See that right there? You're actually doing pretty good on saturation. So, what we, what we can actually do is maybe even get rid of some of those. Um, maybe we'll do that. Um, let's see. Where are you at? You got, like, another lesson in itself, which is kind of cool. Where are you at? Why am I having a hard time? Oh, duh. I was already on it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where's saturation? Let's see. Let's get blue. Let's pull that down a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna. I, I feel like there's too much blue in the shot, like the saturation in the in the blues are it's just too much. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like taking it down a little bit so I could increase the other ones just a little bit. And let's see if I end up. I'm gonna kind of like bounce around. I don't even know if it's going to look good. I'm te te technically not even looking at the image really right now. I'm just l doing the mathematical stuff. I'm trying to make uh, the blue part uh, below this little corner pocket. I don't even know if it looks good. I have no clue. Let me see what it looks like. Me. 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 Yeah. Subtle. But, yeah, that, that's pretty much, like, as saturated as you're going to want it. So, right there, that's technically uh, a balanced image. And if you could tell, you should be able to tell it's uh, fully colored now. Uh, what you could do now, uh, uh, let's see, let's st stay on point. You're asking pretty much, all, like, that stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything and give you a little bit more extra stuff to play around with. All right, so uh, that was a demonstration on how to... Uh, do exposure and white balance with uh, the GH4 Cinelec D. And so if you want to get even crazier, this node, that's where you start applying like looks or whatever like that. All right. And uh, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. You just, I don't know, like a really simple teal and orange ish. Yeah. So like uh, that's what you do with the, sec the second node. I'm not going to make anything too crazy. Yeah. Eh, not, not too bad. I like to go subtle with uh, the GH4, because otherwise the image breaks apart. Cool. So uh, I hope that answers your question on how to address uh, Cinelec D, and use the same exact techniques whenever you're doing anything log. It's really that simple. Or even Rec. 709. It's, it's literally the same exact workf workflow at all times. I've never really changed it up ever since day one. All right. Take care.